Sharon was sat listening to the radio, specifically to Tony Dodd, a UFO investigator who was describing cases he had investigated over the years involving bizarre claims of alien abduction. The more Sharon listened, the more unsettled she became. Many of the incidents Dodd was describing seemed to mirror bizarre, unexplained events in her own life. She would often awake, for example, to find her nightdress had not only been removed, but was nowhere to be found anywhere in the house. She would also often awake to find blood on her pillows from nosebleeds in the night. Many times she would wake up in random rooms in her house, with no memory of how she'd even gotten there. Even stranger, on several occasions, she had even awoken to find mud and dirt on her feet, in her bed and on the bedroom floor. There were further, more unnerving details too. She would often discover strange marks on her body, as well as noticing bizarre aromas in her home. Electrical equipment would sometimes malfunction with no explanation, and clocks would even begin to tick backward without warning or reason. She began to suspect that she too had been abducted by alien entities. She would eventually contact Dot and the pair arranged to meet. Sharon would undergo hypnotic regression therapy with Dot to unlock any potential memories of otherworldly contact. And some of the revelations that would come out of these sessions would not only confirm that she was indeed a victim of alien abduction, but that these extraterrestrials had been on Earth for thousands of years and had direct involvement in human history. To begin with, Dodd would regress Sharon to the morning of a recent suspected abduction. It was 5 a.m. and Sharon was getting out of bed to get ready for work. For reasons she couldn't explain, she was drawn to the bedroom window. When she looked out, she could see three disc-shaped objects hovering in the air outside her house. She stared at them for several seconds before suddenly finding herself inside a large white room. She could see ramps all around her, leading in different directions, connecting to other strange rooms. She further noticed several tall, tanned creatures in the room with her, one of whom instructed her telepathically. The next thing she realized, she was being led along one of the large ramps and was taken into another white room where dozens of other people were standing. All of them were facing the same way, as if waiting for someone to appear. Several moments later, one of these strange entities stood before them. What followed was a telepathic lecture, one which Sharon recalled filled them with sadness. They were told of the increasing damage that pollution was doing to the planet and that they had to do whatever they could to stop this. Then the group was asked to turn around. They did and found themselves looking out of a huge window. Through this window was the planet Earth. It was at that moment that Sharon realized they'd been taken into space. She next described walking down a long corridor to another room. Unlike the previous room, this one was very dark except for a strange light in front of her. She was led toward the light and an immediate surge of fear ran through her body. She described feeling a sense of numbness and also of being restrained. She also realized that there were other entities in the room, much different from the ones who had brought her there. These creatures were shorter and had oversized heads with huge eyes. They were manipulating some kind of device that inserted a large needle into her stomach. Although she could feel the procedure taking place, she didn't feel any pain. The next thing she recalled was being in front of a strange triangular door. One of the tall creatures was leading her towards it. She stepped into it and was instantly back in her bedroom. Dodd also regressed Sharon back to several other abductions she had experienced, some of which went back to her childhood. Perhaps the most startling of these came during an abduction that she'd suffered when she was a teenager 
She recalled that she was in her aunt's back garden when she suddenly realized she was floating off the ground. As she looked up, she could see a metallic object above her, an object she was getting closer to every second. She noticed how the object was made from strange paneling with numerous tubes protruding from it. Even stranger, though, was the strange writing on the sides of the craft, writing that reminded her of ancient Egyptian symbols and hieroglyphics. She once again found herself inside the ship in a large room full of people. Once more, one of the tall, tanned creatures spoke to them all telepathically. They were told that the pyramids were extremely important to life on Earth. And what's more, they themselves had put the pyramids here. Humans, the tall entity told them, had to learn the importance of these ancient structures. Sharon, incidentally, recalled nothing of the abductions following the regression sessions. And although she did feel more at peace after viewing the videotapes of them, she declined further regression sessions. The memories she did unlock, though, are certainly fascinating. What should we make of both the idea that the pyramids were built by aliens, as well as the ancient Egyptian-style symbols Sharon had seen on the spacecraft? Might that suggest some kind of connection to not only the pyramids, but also the ancient Egyptian civilization itself? Admittedly, such notions are outlandish and unlikely. There are, though, many UFO encounters with details describing such Egyptian-style symbols on the walls of these futuristic spacecraft. It is perhaps also worth recalling that these extraterrestrials spoke to Sharon of the pollution to the planet. Might this connect to the apparent importance of the pyramids? Many researchers have suggested these magnificent buildings from antiquity may have been ancient power plants, ones that harness the natural energy and power of the planet itself. This idea might not be as crazy as it first sounds. Let's take arguably the most famous pyramids on the planet, those of Giza in Egypt. Their location is right next to the great river Nile, which would have provided an ample water supply needed to produce electricity. The outside of the pyramids was encased with white tufa limestone that was so precisely and tightly fitted, not even a razor blade could have fit between any of the huge blocks. White tufa limestone has high insulating properties and does not contain magnesium. This casing likely prevented electricity being produced inside the pyramid from escaping without control. The stone blocks inside the pyramids themselves are made from a form of limestone that contains both crystal and metal. These three examples alone signify flawless engineering and design and ultimately great intelligence. Although he didn't suggest an extraterrestrial involvement, researcher and author Christopher Dunn did offer how the pyramids at Giza could indeed have been an ancient power plant in his book, The Giza Power Plant, Technologies of Ancient Egypt. Dunn offered that the king's chamber was the core of the process and that essentially the pyramids responded sympathetically with the Earth's vibration and then converted that energy into electricity. Water from the Nile was pumped into the king's chamber, entering beneath the pyramid. This would cause pressure and ultimately the pyramid would vibrate. There is, incidentally, evidence of water erosion on the floor of the king's chamber. In the queen's chamber, there have been discoveries of traces of zinc and hydrochloric acid. It has been suggested that the hydrated zinc was put through the northern shaft leading to the chamber and the dilute hydrochloric acid came through the southern shaft. There is evidence and trace elements recovered in these shafts to back up this theory. Dunn went on to suggest that these two chemicals were poured down the respective shafts, mixing together inside the Queen's chamber. When these two liquids are brought together, a chemical reaction occurs. A product of that chemical reaction is hydrogen, which would trigger combustion. 
Dunn suggested that the hydrogen gas travelled from the Queen's chamber into the King's chamber, where the vibrations from the subterranean pool energised the hydrogen atoms, transforming them into a microwave energy beam. Remember, the granite would aid in this final part of the process. Might this be the importance of the pyramids that the aliens spoke about? Might our understanding of these potential power supplies assist us in producing more environmentally friendly ways to power our world? We should note that many other alien abduction accounts feature claims of being warned of the damage humans are doing to the planet, which perhaps corroborates Sharon's claims. If extraterrestrials did put pyramids all over the Earth, does that suggest this was once their home? Or have they merely been visitors here for many thousands and thousands of years? And what of the medical experiments that Sharon and countless others with similar claims have spoken of? Could this suggest a deeper involvement in the human race? And might the key to understanding and unlocking that connection between humans and extraterrestrials be found in the many pyramids across the Earth?